Well, that's enough of that nonsense. We are en route to the bonfire area um, because I'm hoping this morning to have my final bonfire of this autumn, winter, early spring season. It's comprised of a little bit of um, pruning that we've been doing around the house, just the final touches before we get ready for the summer season. So a relatively small bonfire by my standards, but it does it does mark the end of uh, end of something. So end of bonfire season typically means potentially just around the corner is the start of um, lawn mowing season. If you're new here, you're in for a treat. <laughs> you're about to embark upon about five or six months worth of me basically mowing my lawns footage <laughs> because once this stuff gets growing, it grows pretty quickly and I feel obliged to keep it under control in order to protect my property from potentially going on fire. So yes, you've got that to look forward to. And I'm not sure I haven't run out of ways of trying to make that interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to try and light this. It could be a bit tricky, um, but I'll see how I go and then I'll catch up with you later. I'm using my cardboard method. Um, so basically we stash a load of cardboard in that cupboard underneath the water tank. And usually on two sides of the bonfire, I stack up a load of cardboard, put in a fire lighter, light it, and off we go. And then I go round and do the same on the other side. I normally like to have two points of ignition. Because hopefully, if just one of them takes, the bonfire should get going okay. But you never really know what side that's going to be. And typically I, I will continue to add cardboard to the bonfire until I can see that the bonfire material is burning, not just the cardboard. And that can take a while, so luckily I've got a big stash, but um, we'll see how this goes. Fair. that went quite nicely. What I'm going to do now actually is that I've just got a little bit of material down the fire break here which is starting to crowd over the path so I'm actually going to prune that and just add it to the bonfire. I normally have the material prepped in advance but um, I knew that it wouldn't really matter because there's not a lot of material so I'm going to Get on and do that now. Forgive me if I work around you, but uh, basically since I've turned my attention a little bit this morning to the small stretch of fire break which goes from the lawn in the direction of the creek, um, there's one final thing that I thought I'd do today involving my chainsaw. And that is Essentially, the, um, the fire break wasn't really there before the bushfire came through. And um, I, one of the first things I did when we got back was to re-establish fire breaks which had become overgrown. And this was one of them. And at the time, 
the tool that I had to hand was my uh, reciprocating saw, which did the job which I needed it to do, but has done it in a manner which is slightly inadequate because it's left quite high stumps coming out of the lawn, which I will show you. But what that means is when I go over on my ride or mower, I'm forever clipping these um, stumps, which is really unpleasant and has, I'm sure, caused quite a lot of damage to um, blades. When I was working on the Mr. Darcy walk, what I had done there when I was clearing that fire break was get an old chainsaw chain and uh, really basically just, just use that instead. So what I'm doing now, which you can't really see, is I am taking off the uh, chain from my chainsaw and I will replace it with the Mr. Darcy walk chains, which are hanging up behind me. And I'll head over to the fire break and see if I can um, take these down to the ground a bit more so that I am not hitting it so much this summer with my lawnmower. So let's uh, see how that goes. I'm going to continue further down the fire break and work my way up. But this is the sort of thing, so you can see how um, it's slightly protruding from the ground. And there's quite a few. And I sort of hoped that over time the mower would chomp these off, but that doesn't seem to be happening. So what I'm hoping I can do is, is take these closer to the ground with the chainsaw with the dodgy chain on it to help mitigate against the problems I've had with hitting these as I've mowed over them. If it works down here, I think what I'll do is I'll then go over and do the bit of fire break opposite the Mr. Darcy walk, like right, the continuation of the Mr. Darcy walk down to the creek walk, because I've got similar problems there. And actually I have to finish the Mr. Darcy walk um, chopping things down because we took down those big trees and I haven't gone back over to trim those down either. So I'll do a bit of trimming this morning. Hopefully by doing this sort of groundwork, it'll make my life that little bit more pleasant come summer and also help to preserve my ride on lawnmowers and certainly their blades and cutting decks for a little bit longer. One thing that coming down here revealed to me is that it's time to start harvesting the bracken which has started to sprout up. You may not be able to see it, but there's just little fronds coming up all in this little section. This was a brackeny section to begin with. Um, the reason that I harvest it is that I like to add it to my acidic compost bin, so I make two different types of compost. Basically, the only difference is one has bracken in it and the, well, one set has bracken in it and the other set doesn't, and they're beneficial for slightly different plants. This, as I've mentioned previously, but if you are new, adding bracken to the compost makes a more acidic compost, more akin to peat, and I like to use that around my acid-loving plants, my azaleas, my rhododendrons, etc. We are on an acid soil, so I use the compost without this for um, more like the fruit trees and the raised beds once I've built them for my vegetables and things. It's nice to get them whilst they're sort of young and tender. And what I do is cut them by hand, um, snip them into slightly smaller pieces and just chuck them in the compost bin. I find that... When you first clear a patch of bracken, it tends to spring up quite uh, aggressively. But after a number of years of continuously knocking it back, it does start to tail off. 
so I'm going to try and keep on top of this and then eventually it'll basically dwindle off so uh, there'll be far less for me to have to come and do but enough to add to the compost bin to keep that process ticking over. My final task for this morning is over here at the Rambling Rector. Rambling Rector is a rambling rose known for being quite a thuggish plant and therefore a plant which requires quite a lot of space in order to allow it to grow. Uh, when we first planted it, it was sort of yay high. And in fact, I did have to move it because where I planted it, it turned out to be suboptimal. And now, if you can see, it's growing all up this tree, springing out at you and carrying on up here and is getting up to this part of the tree. So it's gradually doing what it's supposed to. You can see that it's just springing into life with its lovely new bright green leaves. And you can see as well that it's starting to put flowers on. I chose this tree because, well, this sort of group of trees because it had these quite low to the ground branches, which unlike the trees closer to the house, I'm happy to leave. So this gives a little bit of structure for the rays to climb up and who knows how high it might one day get. But like all non-native plants, <clears throat> it does struggle a little bit with these growing conditions. They're not as amenable as in the UK. I do have to take quite a lot of care over how I treat this plant and even then, as I say, I suspect in the UK it would be twice the size of this by now. However, um, it's doing all right. So what I'm going to do quickly is put on some of this slow release fertilizer, which I like to do a couple of times a year, and then put on this entire barrow of manure just to help enrich the soil around it. It's never easy growing plants around eucalyptus trees because they discourage that through the leaves and the sort of oils in the leaves and I guess, I don't know, other things. They're very dry under there, for example. So I'm doing what I can to help. But it is going pretty well and I'm thinking maybe at some point soonish, maybe not this year, but um, I might start taking cuttings and then dotting more around the property. It's just sort of nice to introduce a little bit of variety and it does have, to be fair, quite a nice fragrance, although I don't cut the flowers for the house. And then the other benefit it has is that they do put on rose hips, um, which I again don't, <laughs> don't utilise. I've made rose hip syrup in the past and I would say that it's not really worth it. Um, <laughs> but maybe birds or other animals might enjoy them so I don't mind that but I'm going to crack on with this and then stop for a quick break and then who knows what my afternoon has in store I haven't decided yet Thanks, Rita. That's a nice shot. <laughs> Rita and I um, wanted to end this week's vlog with this exciting news. Um, I'm sorry if it's all flicking around as you're looking at it, um, but hopefully you can under you can you can decipher what you're seeing and it's not sending your eyes mad. Basically, a bit of shameless promotion for um, REGFM, where we'll does a show every Saturday evening and once a month on the Thursday evening um, but they've got a new radio drama called There's No Place Like Home uh, written by our very own Will the Small Time <laughs> um, and so the first episode was last night and by the time you watch this there may be a couple of episodes so if you want to um listen to it 
just find the REGFM website, just search REGFM, um, and you'll either land on this homepage or if this is taken down at any point, there's a tab at the top and it'll take you to the There's No Place Like Homes dedicated page on the REGFM website and you can listen to the promo and eventually all the episodes so for now there's one and this is what happens if you click play and now we bring you a simple story of everyday people there's no place like home and you'll be able to um listen to will's latest venture um, I should point out that, you know, Will did this completely voluntarily. The actors are volunteers. No one was paid to do this. Um, Will also edited the shows and came up with quite a lot of the promotional materials for it. So, um, although I believe, I don't believe he's in it, but I may be wrong. Maybe he's done a Hitchcock and he'll pop up, but I'm not aware he's done that. I haven't heard any of them, so um, I was listening to it for the first time, like everyone, uh, as it was broadcast live. So um, I highly recommend it, it was really good. Think sort of Neighbours Come, The Archers. They're very, very short episodes, um, so it's hardly an onerous task and you'll be showing a bit of love to um, Will and I'm sure he really appreciate that. So no excuse, just look up REGFM and uh, you'll be able to find it.